Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel because we have a long time to go before we finally can play GTA 6 I decided to take again a look on GTA 5 in regards of HDR and back then when I reviewed the game for the very first time I found HDR much better than SDR at least on my LG CX but back then I couldn't tell you how good HDR is actually implemented from a point of yeah from a technical point of view because I was not able to answer any questions about black level floor and to be very honest I was actually not aware of any issues with black level floor back then but nowadays I have better tools I have more experience so let's take a very close look on HDR in GTA 5. And for this video I tested the PC version, I tested PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and I would like to start with the PC version and here I have actually bad and good news. So let's start with the bad news first. GTA 5 on PC still does not support HDR natively, just Auto HDR. But that's actually the good news because HDR or Auto HDR in this case is just much better than SDR. And what I found is that Auto HDR in GTA 5 on the PC is actually pretty good looking. But as always there are a couple of things what we need to consider. First of all, I was not able to use Lilium's HDR analyzer to analyze HDR or Auto HDR on the PC and the reason is because Auto HDR games are not a 10-bit application and this reshade mod just works with 10-bit applications. So again, Auto HDR is just 8-bit because it actually yeah, converts SDR into HDR. But in this case, it does it really good. What we also need to consider is that any Auto HDR game on PC or Xbox is using the HDR system level calibration. But, and that's the downside of Auto HDR games, just up to 1000 nits maximum peak brightness. That means even you have a LG G3 with a much higher maximum peak brightness and your HDR system level calibration is set up in the correct way, the game or any Auto HDR game will just output maximum 1000 nits. And the only setting what we have in GTA 5 on a PC to change the picture is the brightness setting and I found a value between plus 5 and plus 15 a good range to start with. And what I mean when I'm talking about a range between plus 5 and plus 15 is that you reduce the brightness setting to the absolute minimum. And then you increase the value at least plus 5 steps or maximum plus 15 steps. So what I found is below plus 5 steps I found the picture just very very dark and you have a lot of black level crush. Above 15 steps the picture is very washed out. So again a value between plus 5 and plus 15 is for me a very good start. And at some point I settled with the value of plus 10 for my LG G2 where I mainly played the PC version. I found the picture has a very great contrast with the setting and the picture has also a okay average picture brightness. But again this setting is of course depending on your screen, on your settings and of your own liking. So now let's move on and let's talk about the console version and I tested the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 version and what I found is in regards of HDR there is no difference between PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. The main difference on the other hand between console and PC version is that the console version supports native HDR and yeah it is slightly better compared to outer HDR because we are not just talking about better specular highlights we're also talking about better colors but on the other hand there might be some issues with the HDR black level floor. So first of all GTA 5 on the console does not support the HDR system level calibration. On the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X the game offers a proper HDR calibration screen with contrast setting, paper white setting and peak brightness setting. So let's start talking about contrast and I like to make this very quick. So depending on your screen TV and monitor what you're using my recommended setting for this is between 50 and 100. So what I found is below 50 you have a lot of black level crush that means you lose a lot of details in shadows. Even you play the game in a complete dark room on an OLED TV there is not much left in regards of shadow details. 
And if you now increase this value from 80, which by the way is the standard factory setting to let's say 100, then you might end up with a washed out picture in certain situations. So let's move on to the paper white setting and here I found something very interesting. As soon you reduce this value below 160, you start losing maximum peak brightness in specular highlights. And because of this, my recommendation is actually very simple. Do not go below 160 if you like to keep the maximum peak brightness in specular highlights. In regards of the maximum setting for the paper white value, this is a very hard question to answer because it really depends on your TV screen monitor, what you're using. And of course, how do you like the picture? And yeah, the tone mapping, what your TV monitor is using is also very, very important here. So what I found is, and this counts for many, many other games, especially when you play on OLED TVs, but the same counts for LED TVs as well. As soon you increase this value too much, and I'm talking really about too much, you will blow out speckle highlight. So if you're unsure on how you should set up this value, then I would recommend to actually look at specular highlights, very nice detailed specular highlights and increase this value until you lose very fine details. And of course, you can play the game on a very nice bright day. I mean, now talking in game sunny day, of course, and you can increase this value or decrease this value until you think that the brightness of the screen is more or less realistic to a sunny day in real. And last but not least we have the maximum peak brightness setting which is responsible for the yeah, maximum peak brightness capability of your screen monitor or TV. But there's an issue what I found with the HDR maximum peak brightness setting and the issue is that this setting is always under tracking the maximum peak brightness in specular highlights. So that means let's say you set this value to 1000 because you have an LG G2, you would expect a maximum peak brightness output of 1000 nits for specular highlights. But this is not the case. That's why my recommendation is always go 100 nits higher than the maximum peak brightness capability of your screen TV or monitor. And if you don't know the maximum peak brightness of your screen monitor or TV, then just check out the website artings.com because they're testing heaps of monitors, TV screens, and maybe you're lucky and they tested yours as well. And if you still can't find any information on the World Wide Web about the maximum peak brightness of your monitor, screen or TV, then maybe you should consider that it is not a HDR capable device. And I'm not considering HDR 400 or HDR 600 certified monitors, TVs or screens as HDR ready. So let's talk about the HDR black level floor. And what I found after analyzing this is that the game can reach zero nits output, which means in theory, the contrast in this game should be perfect. But what I also found is that the game uses some sort of dynamic brightness changer. That means when you look at a very bright object, everything around gets very dark. The other way around, when you look at a very dark object or place, then everything is getting more bright, which can lead to a slightly washed out look. But again, from a technical point of view, the game can reach zero nits. Everything else is creator's intent. So let's talk about HDR colors and yes, the HDR color space DCI-P3 and BT2020 is in use in GTA 5, but as in many other games, just in certain situations and not very often. But again, this is not a big deal because with the SDR color range, we have more than enough colors to use. So let's talk about specular highlights. Let's talk about quality in specular highlights. And what I mean with quality is very simple. We just don't have very bright objects. We have actually very detailed bright objects. And when we're now looking on specular highlights in this game, you can see that we have very fine details in those objects. So that means in regards of brightness, we have a lot of brightness steps or differences in specular highlights, which makes those objects actually really good looking. The problem is just doing gameplay or while you're playing the game, you hardly have time to appreciate how much work Rockstar Game put actually in those little details. And now let's talk about my recommended settings for the LG CX, S95C and the LG G2. And my first recommendation is actually 
that you should use HGAG in this game. And the reason is actually very simple why I recommend to use HGAG because dynamic tone mapping on, especially during the night, is just over brighten the picture way too much. And during the day I found that there is hardly a difference between dynamic tone mapping on and HGAG because the maximum brightness is already very high. Dynamic tone mapping on can't do any more. And on the other hand, or on top, we have a really good working paper white setting which can improve the average picture brightness while we're using HGHG. But let's start with the contrast setting and my recommendation is for the LGCX G2 and S95C leave it as it is if you're playing in a normal lit room. If you play in a very, very bright room, then you maybe can increase this value towards 100, but keep in mind, you will end up with a slightly washed out picture. And on the other hand, if you play in a very dark room, you can decrease this value. But keep in mind, the more you decrease this value, the more very fine details you lose in shadows. So let's move on to the paper white settings, but please keep in mind that I'm preferring a little bit of a brighter picture and all my recommendations are made with H. GHG enabled. For the LGCX I'm using a paper white setting of 320. For the LG G2 I'm using 300 and for the S95C I'm using 250. My recommendation for the maximum peak brightness in this game is very simple. Always go 100 nits above the maximum peak brightness capability of your screen TV or monitor. And that means for the LGCX use a value of 900, for the LG G2 use a value of 1100 and for the S95C use the maximum value of 1500 nits. So let's talk about the FTDA settings, the fine tuned dark area settings on LG OLED TVs and the good news is that in GTA 5 we don't have any issues with the HDR black level floor. So that means in theory we don't need to use the FTDA settings because there is no issue with the HDR black level floor in this game. But the problem is as soon you use HDR or as soon you use VRR on the console or PC you have additional black level floor rays. And my recommendation for the FTDA setting is minus four when you use HGHG and minus 10 when you use dynamic tone mapping on. Please keep in mind, in order to use the FTDA setting, you must enable VRR on the console or PC. Okay, my friends, so that's it for this video. And I have to admit, I had a lot of fun testing this game because yeah, in regards of graphics, in regards of visual quality, HDR sound gameplay, GTA 5 is as Red Dead Redemption a milestone. And because I know now you like to play the game as well, I don't want to bother you anymore. Thank you very much for watching me. See you next time. Bye.